Hello friends, welcome to Code Sutra. Let's solve lead code problem number 209 minimum size subarray sum. In this problem, we are given an array and we are given a target. And we have to find the size of the subarray that can actually have a sum greater than this target. For example, this, even before that, what is a subarray? A subarray is a continuous element in an array. For example, 2, 3 is a subarray. 2, 3, 1 is a subarray. The element just 2 is a subarray and the entire thing is a subarray. But the thing is you cannot skip any elements in between. So this is the definition of subarray. Now we have to find out the length of the subarray that actually has a sum greater than 7 and also has the shortest length. For example, this array if we take, what is the sum? 2, 3, 1, 2. The sum will be equal to 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. Is it greater than 7? Yes, it is greater than 7. And what is the length? The length equals 4. That is 2, 3, 1, comma 4. So this will be one of our answer. But we have to find the best possible answer and that will be given by 4, comma 3. What is the sum? The sum equals 7. And what is the length that of this last two elements? The length equals 2. So this will be our answer. That is, this is the shortest subarray with the given target or more than the target. So what is the brute force approach that we can first follow? The brute force approach is we will find out all the subarrays and then we will keep a track of our answer and that will finally will be returning the answer. What is the approach that we will be doing here? First, we will start from here i equals 0 and for i equals 0 we will also start from j equals 0 to n. What we will do is First, we'll start from 2 is the sum. Then we'll include the next element. 3 is the sum. The total sum is 5. Then we'll include the next. The total sum is 6. The next, the total sum is 8. So now you can actually stop here. We are only considering the element starting with i is equal to 0. And once we are done this, we have an answer here that is equal to 4. Next thing is we can go to the next element that is equal to i equals 1. So once we go to i, I equals 1, then again we will be doing the same thing. 3, 1, 2. What is the sum here? The sum is still 6. So can we go to the next element? Yes, the length also in this case is equal to 4. But if you look here, what is the same thing that we are doing in the two cases? The same thing that we are doing in these both cases is we are calculating the sum of these things again and again. We are calculating the sum of these elements once again. So that we should look at it. Can we reduce this, right? What is happening between this and this? If you look, we are just deleting this element and we are just adding this element, right? We are just deleting one element and adding the another element. So can we do the same operation? Yes. So the same operation is called as sliding window technique or particular to this problem, this can also be called as two pointer technique. What we will do is we will have our integer i is equal to 0, j is equal to 0 and we will keep track of the sum. What we will be doing here is until our sum is lesser than or equal to target, we will be keep on increasing the size of the window which means can we add another element? Yes, right. We can add 2. Is the sum greater than 7? No. Can we add 3? Our j becomes 1. Can we add 3? Yes, 3 can be added. Is the sum greater? No, the sum is still 5. Can we add the next element that is 1? Yes, one can also be added. Now, is the sum greater? No, not yet. So, we can still add the next element. And now, our sum has come to h. Now, our sum is equal to 8. So, now, can we add the next element to this window? No, right. Our sum has already increased. So, what we will be doing is, we will be increasing the value of i and we will be decreasing the sum by this value. Our new sum will be equal to 6 and our new i will be equal to 1. So that is what happened. Then again, the same thing. Once the sum has come below 6, what can we can do is we can add the next element, which is the next element. The next element is 4. When we add the next element, what is the sum? The sum will become 10. Once the sum becomes 10, can we remove this element? Yes, we can remove this element. The new sum becomes 7 and our i becomes 2. And next, can we add the next element? No, the sum is already 7. So you have to delete again this element. Now the element sum has come at 6. So once it has come at 6, now can we add the next element? Yes, the next element can be added which is equal to 7. 
and finally this will be our answer but don't forget we have to keep track of the length whenever our sum exceeds 7 we have to keep track of the length how do we keep track of it the length is nothing but j minus i plus 1 how for example let's take this and this what is i and j i and j the difference between them is just one but don't forget we have to add one at the end because it is the size that they are asking so the length at every point whenever the sum exceeds will be equal to this formula and we have to keep track of this and if this length is lesser than our answer if it is lesser than already existing answer we will update our answer to length so this is a very simple technique called as the sliding window technique now let's go through the pseudo code first initially i will be equal to zero j will be equal to zero our sum will also be equal to zero but i have written the answer here as something one followed by six zero why in the problem it is given that the maximum length of the array can be 10 power 5 so i have added just one more zero to that so this will be our maximum answer what we'll be doing is first thing if j or our second pointer it has not exceeded the array's length we will increase the sum right that is what we did first here we first added the first element 2 to the sum once we have added 2 to the sum what we will do is we will check if the sum is greater than that if the sum is not greater than target what we will do is we will simply increase or include the next element in the array so that is what we will be doing but if the sum is greater than the target what we will be doing we will be deleting the elements one by one that is we are deleting the elements from the left one by one but at every step we are also calculating the answer that is it the our answer will be either the existing answer or whatever this particular sum is generating and finally we have this written statement why this written statement is because in the problem it is given that suppose we have this array one comma one comma one and our target is five is it possible that we can ever get a sum of 5? No, right? So in this case, we have to return 0 as the answer. So that is what we are doing here. If it is possible, we will be returning answer. If not, we will be returning 0. So let's dive into the code for this problem. It's a straight away implementation of the pseudo code. So I won't be going in depth. And finally, we'll be returning the answer. Thank you for watching the video. Please do like, share and subscribe.